Welcome back to more Ender All Forgotten Stories. I am Negative Zero. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing all right. And look what we have here. I was just doing a walkabout of the Sun Temple area, and I found the Butcher of Arc Volume 3. Now, we don't have... Right, I'm not going to read it now. I'll save that for a separate video. But at first, I think I want to find the second one before I read that one. Oh, look at this. I wonder if we can maybe buy a place here that I don't know if that's right. Anyway, they're down here in the basement. We're right below where we came in and ended the last video. There are some, yeah, there's some places where I can sell some things. There's also a smithy right here, the armory, and I'm going to do that. And I'll cut back when we go inside and meet Constantine. You know, I actually forgot, we have the two necklaces from the Apothecary that we first met when we started our adventure in Enderal. I think I can I turn them explained. into this guy. Apothecary is by my path. My companion and I work together with the Arcanists here, and we investigate the Red Madness. How may I help you? Greetings. Hmm, you don't seem familiar. You're here for business, I assume. Do the names Finn and Carbos ring a bell? Finn and Carbos, of course. Who doesn't know? An odd duo and completely inseparable. Why do you ask? I'm not sure how to say this, but they're dead. What? How? How do you know that? They helped me when I washed ashore at the Sun Coast, but our camp was attacked by bandits. We were outnumbered. <sighs> My Malthus, that's... I... One tragic event after another. Now listen. This question might seem peculiar, but is there any chance you found amulets on them? Yeah, I'll go ahead and give them. You are fortunate. I have them with me. Yes, that's them. Thank you. We owe it to them. Here, you've earned this. I'll send a pigeon with the news to the League as soon as possible. Okay, let's let's do the knowledge question here. Tell me a bit more about your order, the League of the Apothecary. With all due respect to your thirst for knowledge, I am not a magister, and I've got my hands full. In a nutshell, we are healers, and our path is to cure ailments with magic and alchemy. Our monastery is far to the north, in the Frostcliff Mountains. However, you won't be able to reach it at the moment due to the heavy snowfall. And in case that doesn't sate your appetite, there are a couple of books about us in the library, or maybe even the Chronicum. You could say that, yes. Well then, well then you've come to the right place. Okay, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know what that was. Anyways, I'm going to sell some stuff to him, maybe buy a few things, and I will be right back. So I think we're ready. Uh, let's go ahead and, oh, I sold all my stuff and I picked up a bunch of learning books. Now, if we look here, you can see that I've got basically 25s for one-handed block and heavy armor. I have a couple of bonuses, but that's basically where we're at. So we need to use the adept books and the adept books cost 170 pennies a piece. So I can't use the apprentice one anymore. Like if I click on this. It says you've already developed the skill too well to benefit from this learning book. So I have to use the adept ones, which means we have a vast increase in the cost of improving ourselves. I bought two heavy armor ones and I bought five one handed. I really want to improve our damage output. And now I want to go ahead. Yeah, we're on meditation. So let's do that. And I think we have one or two. We have one memory point, which I think is going to go into blocking. Bashing an enemy, disarm them. Slows you down less. Hmm. Oh, I like that. Magic reduction. 
hmm, uh, do I want this one or this one? The weight hasn't really been an issue. So let's take the shield stroke, bashing an enemy. Maybe we can disarm them. That's pretty good. Let's get out of here. And I think we are finally ready to get started. What? Let's head upstairs. What? And head around this way, yep. Yes, yes, that just might work. Hello. Now, if it isn't the prodigy, well... Lashari performed the the <laughs> Lashari performed the ritual on me. There were problems in old Rashengrad. Yes, I know. She's already told me everything. Good work. Even though part of her report seemed to be a bit enthusiastic, but I'll leave the judgment to Aranthiel. He wants to talk to you anyway. Seems you've caught his interest. So we know who Aranthiel is. I'm not going to ask this question. He's the head of the order. He's the guy who's working with his arch enemies to do something. Fine. Where can I find him? In the Emporium, the last building on the left side of the temple. Just tell the guard that Aranthiel has asked for you and they will let you in. Ah, yes. Before I forget... My dame Lucy has left a token of gratitude for you. It's your choice. Do you want a book, an old map, or a bag of pennies? Plus two learning points. I was going to say take the treasure map, but I think we want the learning points. Yes. Very well. Now get a move on. I'm sure we'll talk again later. Sweet. Where is this? So, where is this? Learning book, plus two learning points. We'll read that right away. We can sell these. I don't think any of these are useful to us. Maybe the two-handed, but we're not really going down that path. We need to head over to Aranthiel, who's in a different building. It was Euro's grief, his instability, that made him susceptible to the red madness in the first place. This is holy ground, Outlander. Oh, night has fallen. I... Where do we want to go? Basically straight ahead, right over... Oh, I just needed to go forward a few steps. So that's where the studies are happening. This, I think, is the training hall. Or maybe the downstairs. is. No, no, no. This is where, um, yeah, the quarters where people live. And this, I guess, is the boss's place. This is holy ground, Outlander. The Emporium. Malthus's blessings. Malthus's blessings. Let's look around for a second. I don't think any of the books that we want are here. I, and I don't think I want to steal anything, especially oh, since there's a guard right there. Always talking much. But we'll keep our eyes open for any special books. Oh, I can hear. Oh, here we go. Who sent the mercenaries. This Pegas said that they were after the signet stone, and if they succeed in getting hold of it next time, then the Black Guardian alone knows how to stop the cycle. The cycle? Listening to you talk almost makes me forget that all this fuss here is merely based on some bad dreams you and your Neremine friends had. Oh, the threat is real. Deny it as much as you like, but deep inside, you feel it as much as I do. Teela, this... You're a commander, and a commander doesn't care about feelings, but about facts. You have made this mistake before, Tilor, back then in Kira, and we all know... The mission will happen. I'm sorry. You have a visitor. I like her. She's all business. So, you are the prodigy everyone is talking about. 
Interesting. I am Teola Aranthia, son of Laurius I and Grand Master of the Order. And I'm honored to meet you. What is your name? NZ, you wanted to see me. Yes, and I will come straight to the point. You are here because I believe that you are special. Humanity faces a threat that needs to be stopped. And to achieve this, you are indispensable. You're talking about the Red Madness, aren't you? Among other things, yes. I do not need to explain to you that the present situation on Vin is chaotic. The wars, the living dead, common people who are losing their minds, to name only the most obvious. What most people are not aware of is the connection between these events. You, however, have encountered it, as have I. The visions. So you know where they come from? I do. And I will explain everything to you. What it means, who we are, and what your part in all of this is. Come, follow me. Maybe you already know who I am. My Map of Vin. Life, I served the gods who ruled Vin until their death two years ago. What you probably do not know is that the one responsible who for are you? death is my son, Narazul Aranthion. He hated the Lightborn because he believed that they robbed mankind of their right to freedom. So he strived to overthrow them. He found followers, formed an army and declared war on them. And thus on me. A servant of the Lightborn as well. It all ended in a battle 30 years ago, which Narazul won. He killed every single survivor except for me and locked me in a dungeon on Nereen. I still do not know why he spared me. This is a complicated relationship you have with your son. So the Lightborn are really dead. If you, the Order of the Gods, acknowledge that fact, why do people not know about it? Good question. Because at the moment, stability is the highest good, even more so considering what we are facing. The rulers of Kira and Kile both made the mistake to acknowledge the death of the gods to their people, and the civil wars that followed in their countries are evidence of the chaos that such a revelation entails. Enderal is the cradle of the Order of the Gods, the epitome of theocracy. It is unthinkable what would happen if we confirmed these rumors. I am sure you understand this. Maybe when all this is over that will change, but for now it is imperative that we deny all rumors of that kind. So basically it's for stability's sake so they can fight the threat that faces them, which is fine. I get that. If Nerethzel was your son, why did he hate the gods so much? Shouldn't he have been, I don't know, more devoted to them? There were circumstances favoring the development. But it's a long story, which we won't discuss now. I think this has... Uh, this is the part that I believe connects to the Nera mod for Oblivion. I've never played it. I don't know what the story is. But it seems to... The way that they don't talk about the story that part of the story it leads me to believe that i it makes me int don't walk into me <laughs> leads me to believe that uh that that's what that mod is all about but anyway you managed to free yourself yes after more than 30 years when the death of the gods made the magic around the prison disappear and during my escape in the northern mountains of nerim i also had them for the first time the dreams I always saw the same glaring, terrible light. Heard screaming, and I felt like I was burning up from the inside. And above all, like a veil, there was the knowledge of imminence. At first, of course, I dismissed these dreams as the delusion of a man close to death. So I concentrated on making it through the mountains somehow. Two days after my escape, I was completely exhausted, and I would have died if a former acolyte of my son had not found me. An acolyte of your son? But weren't they your enemies? Yes. Uh-oh. Like a veil, 
There was the knowledge of... Had a little bit of a crash there. We're going to give this another shot. These dreams as the delusion of a man close to death. So I concentrated on making it through the mountains somehow. Two days after my escape, I was completely exhausted. And I would have died if a former acolyte of my son had not found me. Yes, but he did not recognize me and brought me to their headquarters instead, an old monastery in the mountains. The others were aware of my identity, but for whatever reason they did not kill me. Maybe because they thought that the death of the Lightborn had made me insignificant. I do not know. Still, even after my recovery, the dreams continued. At first, I doubted my sanity. But after some time, I told the leader of the Mages, Constantine, about them. And he said something that I'd never expected. I was not alone. He, as well as many others magically gifted on Vim, dreamed the same dreams. And the more we talked about the matter, the stronger our suspicion grew. Which has now turned out to be the truth. The dreams. They come from the same place. They are a shared memory. A shared memory? You mean the dreams originate from what? A common mind? A collective subconscious, yes. I know that you can feel it too, and probably far more intense than we do. But like you back then, we were not able to make sense of the images. So we went looking for answers in the remains of the civilization that was before us. The Pyrians. Thus the excavations, like an old ration grad. What did you find out? Three things. First, there were many civilizations before us and before the Pyrenees. Maybe hundreds, maybe thousands. Second, the history of each civilization unfolded and still unfolds according to a pattern. They emerge, they blossom, and at some point, at the apex of their existence, they simply disappear without any trace. And third, everything that has happened in the past years and which is still happening indicates that this disappearance lies ahead of us. We are part of an eternal loop, a cycle, and our cycle is approaching its end. So this is the point where we realize that the plot of Enderal has some startling similarities to the Mass Effect trilogy. I was shocked <laughs> when I first found this out. You know what? It's fine because, after all, this is a free mod and there are enough differences in this story to make this uh, a fantastic, interesting adventure on its own. But yeah, it's um, if you've played the Mass Effect trilogy, you will understand the cycle and the end of all things, etc., that's kind of what we're fighting against. So one other thing I want to bring up is Tealor has, we, he's given us some revelations about what's going on. He knows a lot about what's going on and he's determined to fight it. But go back in your mind and think about what Jaspar told us in the bar. The easiest person to manipulate or an easy person to manipulate is a person with strong convictions because they're predictable. That's going to be something that may end up happening in the future uh having an effect anyways on the game in the future hundreds of prophets have predicted the end of the world and it never happened i admit that this world has seen brighter days but isn't this a little too much of a leap you mean the end of humanity lies ahead what else is there a pattern you mean that the chronicles of each civilization are identical not identical but one can split them up into episodes which repeat themselves in the very same manner, into patterns. So this is your explanation for the Red Madness, the wars? Yes, dramatically put, they're the envoys of the end. Hence why I want to read the Butcher of Ark to completion. The Butcher seems to be a Red Madness kind of guy. So you mean that the end of humanity lies ahead? Yes, it does. At first we considered it absurd, as probably you do at this moment. But there came a moment when we simply could not deny it anymore. 
We began to study the history of the Pyrians more intensely, and the parallels were extraordinary. In its early days, the Pyrian Empire was split up by a disaster, just like Vin was split up by the Starfall after the reign of the Eterna. Also, the Pyrians had a ruling caste who declared themselves gods after the catastrophe. The two castes of the Sun Priest. They, too, ruled until they were overthrown. This overthrowing was followed by an outbreak of wars and chaos. And then, just like that, the Pyrenees ceased to exist. They knew it was imminent, but they could not prevent it. They called this event the Cleansing. The Pyrenees knew about the threat. Why didn't they try to do something about it? They tried, but they failed. Who knows why? Maybe they found out too late, or maybe they were too weak. And where do I come in? Where do these visions and my powers come from? Well, this is the reason why we need your help. Not only episodes of history recur within every cycle, characters do as well. Characters recur? Yes, the Pyrians call them the Emissaries. They emerge very shortly before the cleansing occurs, like a law of nature, an answer to the Red Madness. And I am one of them, as are you. While I take on the role of the ruler, you take on the role of the prophet. I'm supposed to be a prophet? It's just a description. Call it what you will. But without doubt, it is the truth. Your story matches the descriptions perfectly. And I take it this is the reason the Naramis mages are here, isn't it? Firespark, Pegast, Sharim? Oh, I don't know if we've met Sharim yet. Yes. Former enemies or not, both sides have understood the magnitude of the threat. The magical knowledge of Narazul's former mages is vast as is the power of the Holy Order. Even though not all of the Keepers agree, as you probably have already noted yourself. Yep, the lady that he was just talking to. So... I forget what I was going to say. Anyways, and why me of all people? I do not know. Firespark the Mage has told me your story. And even though your fate is tragic, unlike me, you were insignificant before your chain. So maybe everyone can become an emissary, or we simply have not understood the pattern yet. So he admits kind of that they don't know everything. If I play a role, does that mean that something is controlling me and controlling us? No. As I already said, the emissaries simply appear at the beginning of the end, like pieces on a chessboard. We are determined by our skills. How and to what end we use them is our choice. That may just be well, wishful thinking. So now we know why the former enemies are working together. It's basically to prevent the end of the world. And what defines this prophet? On the one hand, your power. You carry the potential to master any skill within a fraction of the usual time needed. I assume you have already realized this. On the other hand, your ability to look into the past and therefore into the future. Into the past and therefore into the future? What do you mean? Your visions are a window into the past. And as every cycle is based on the same events, it is a window into the future as well. You can feel the thread this world is woven with. And because of that, you can see things that have happened and thus will happen again. This gift makes you indispensable to us. And it is why I want your help. I think this does interest us. It, for the first time in our life, we are special. So we are going to see this through. Maybe even save the world. Why do you think that we can overcome this cycle in the first place after hundreds of civilizations have failed? That is the wrong question. The correct question is, what alternative do we have? To wait and die? Hmm. All right, if I can help, I will try to do so. Good. However, there's one more thing before the actual work begins. 
I want you to join our order, and to do so, you have to pass a test, a trial. Join your order? Is this really necessary? It is. Whatever you think about our story, we are the only faction that is strong enough to oppose the cycle. If you want to be part of our mission, you need to have access to our knowledge and resources. There will be voices in the Order speaking against your admission, as they are speaking against the presence of the Naranese mages. Consider it an honor or a necessity. It is up to you. It's a good point. What kind of test? It is the trial the novices have to pass in order to be exalted to the role of a keeper. Only the best students of the Squala are allowed admission, and even though you have not been a novice, I want you to take it too. At this very moment, two novices are on their way to the testing grounds. I have informed them about your arrival. Who are the two novices? I have only a slight acquaintance with them. However, I know that they are both very talented and have been working hard toward the test. But see them for yourself. You've already informed them? How could you know that I'd agree? I had a hunch. Let us leave it at that. Very well. Where can I find them? At the border to the heartland, near the Whisper Wood. They will be waiting for you there. Take the Myred, talk to Signet Master Bartar, and hand him this package. And then follow his orders. Ah, oh, one more thing. It might be self-evident, but keep your knowledge about the death of the Lightborn to yourself. I do not believe you can do any real harm. But in the worst case, path-abiding people will consider you a heretic. After the cycle has been stopped, we will deliberate upon how we deal with the matter. If and how we tell our people about it. But not now, that is for sure. Now, leave. The sooner we can dispense with this formality, the better. And there we have it. Wow, okay, that took a long time. So I think we're going to wrap up here for today. I think we're going to do some things around town here in Ark before we head out and continue with the main quest. There's so much stuff for us to do. But for now, that's going to be it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our time together. Take care.